Hello and welcome to Off My Shelves and in this episode we're going to be talking about the gigantic Akira, the 35th anniversary box set edition of Akira by Kachihiro Otomo and we will get underway. It will come as not much surprise really that if you're willing to invest this much money in a book you obviously like it already really. You don't tend to spend hundreds of pounds on a box set if you don't know about it or don't like it, you've probably got some liking for it already and I do absolutely adore Akira on every level and this box set is one of the most beautiful objects I own without a shadow of a doubt. The box set itself obviously flips open as you can see, it's got art on the interior of the box set as well as right the way around the side. It contains six hardback volumes of Akira, all sized pretty much the same size as your standard size trade paperback with a little bit of extra width obviously. Each one contains around about 350 to 400 pages but there are some thicker volumes and some thinner ones. Each of them come with a dust jacket as well and the dust jackets are great, they're colourful and vibrant and they've got great artwork on all the ends of the spines as well but then when you get under the dust jackets that's where the real strength of these hardbacks come into play I think. The art and the design of the boards are just sublime really and they're all in these bright primary colours really for the most part and yeah they're just great looking books really. Inside they're all sewn binding, they've got this old stock matte paper, they're fully black and white these editions and all the captions and the writing on the wall and the onomatopoeia stuff going on in the books are all in Japanese but there's some translation as you go through but then translation on the back as well. Obviously all the text, the word balloons themselves are in English but they haven't changed the original artwork to say if there's writing on the wall saying something in Japanese. In the English versions they changed that to English but in these they kept it original and again the black and white is the original way they were printed as well back in the day. They do come with a few colour pages at the start of each volume but nothing too crazy to be fair and again I prefer the black and white art of this series in a big big way to be fair. So what is the story of Akira then and now it really would be totally thick of me to try and explain all six volumes to you straight off the bat. So the general premise of it is, is that it starts off with a group of bikers, 15 year old bikers with Canada being the lead of them and they're in this new Japan, Neo Japan. The world is in the aftermath of World War 3, World War 3 happened and there was a gigantic explosion that triggered World War 3 but many years later New Tokyo is being rebuilt and the site of this huge explosion is now being developed for the Olympic Games and things like that. It's set in the fictional future of 2019 and the biker gang are just out riding around the town when they meet this child who's got a number on his hand of 26 and he's this mysterious child who doesn't look quite right on any level and seemingly has powers, telekinetic powers and powers to teleport and things like that and his friend Tetsuo gets injured while trying to avoid crashing into this child and that's really the catalyst they try to track down this child and they get more and more pulled into this world where the army is coming out and finding this child and, and they get more and more intrigued. But they are very unlikable characters, particularly Canada starting. He's just a 15 year old kid who's brash, who doesn't really care about anything. They're doing drugs, they're having sex, they're getting out there. They don't care about anything and anyone really. And the only reason they go in more in depth into this world is because they thought that this child had some something to do with hurting Tetsuo and he got in the way and so they were chasing him and then they got pulled deeper and more heavily into this world and then the further they got in the more Canada enjoyed being part of this world, enjoyed being part of the adventure and the army chasing people and finding out all of these different things and so as they go on though Tetsuo after his accident vanishes and it turns out that the army are doing experimentations on him and the army have been doing these experiments for years hence number 26 is one of the army experiments and what they are trying to do is they're trying to awaken latent powers in certain types of human beings so they can bring on super 
powered beings really and Tetsuo has these underlying abilities that they could, are hoping to bring out. On the flip side of all this there's another set of people, the rebels of the piece, that are looking to try and find out who and what Akira is because they've heard whispers of this weapon called Akira but they don't quite know what it is. They get an idea that it's a child and in fact they try to get the child out of the army's base which is why number 26 is out running around the town because they helped him escape thinking he was Akira and so they are being chased by the armies but equally they're trying to figure out what Akira is but Akira is one of these beings that they have awakened the power but Akira had far too much power so they are keeping him in cold storage at the moment but there's whispers of Akira being awoken so while all that is going on in this amazingly dense and complex kind of futuristic world, Tetsuo is getting experimented on and because he was doing drugs at the time and because he's older, the experimentation goes very wrong and he gets hyper powered very quickly and his personality changes pretty much all together and so he starts going around blowing people's heads up with his mind and stuff like that it is a very gruesome and graphic book to be honest in loads of ways and otomo's artwork it just increases that gruesomeness because he does do such amazing art i mean the detail on his artwork in this book and all of these books it's just uh, insane when you look at a certain panel particularly a panel with the city or with the sewerage or with a science lab or something involved the depth of which he's created that panel and the amount of time it must have taken all of these small lines building up and building up the image it's just crazy the amount of effort he clearly must have gone to and the characterization and the faces the body movements everything is absolutely perfect really i haven't got anything but absolute praise and admiration for all of the artwork in every single book but either way book one comes to a close really with a standoff between Canada and Tetsuo because Tetsuo has really gone off the rails and he's trying to be something that he doesn't even fully understand yet and his powers are changing by the day and even by the hour and certainly he is changing and Canada is trying to make sure that first and foremost that his friend was okay but then when his friend Tetsuo does certain negative things to their other friends, he basically swears vengeance on them and then tries to take Tetsuo out. And so from there on in then, the rest of the books follow Tetsuo, follow Canada, and Kay, who is one of the main female protagonists in the story, she is part of the rebel underground going on, and she gets very close with Canada. They become our main characters, essentially, following them. All the while, the army is trying to contain and trying to utilise these superpowered people that they have created, and it doesn't really work out for them. And Tetsuo finally thinks that Akira will have some understanding of who he is and where he is in the world. And so he sets about trying to awaken and trying to find out more about this being of ultimate power that is in cold storage. So yeah, the series very much is following Tetsuo and covering more of these powers and the end the army and other people trying to keep him in check because he's getting too powerful Canada trying to get his revenge and trying to figure out what the hell is going on in general K following along and trying to understand what the army is playing at and trying to put a stop to it really or trying to reveal it to the public but then even part way through the series a massive event happens and it changes the feel of the book entirely it really changes everything because a big event happens in the city and afterwards the book turns into very much this apocalyptic awful vision of the future really and you've got these different factions starting out in the city they're all fighting to be this the supreme faction really but the army isn't there anymore the police isn't there it's a total apocalyptic future for neo tokyo really and the leaders of that new community are these super powered beings but yeah i love the artwork and i love the pacing and i love the story of akira if you like science fiction books and alternative futures and everything like that really then this is definitely a book that should be well on your radar and it's very rare that i will read six books back to back and then when i get to the last one i want to reread them and that happens every time i read akira when i get to the end i want to restart it and i think i've had this box set now for 
just over two years or thereabouts and I've read them four times so that tells you that it is a really good story at least I think it is. The final book in this set is a slightly different size as you can probably see but this is The Art of Akira and so it's called The Akira Club and essentially it's a book full of the artwork of Akira and going in depth into Kachihiro or Tomo's artwork. If you like the artwork in it this is just eye candy that goes in depth into the artwork without any words just the art telling you exactly what a supremely talented artist he is really but yeah that's all i've got to say about akira it is as ever well worth everyone's time it goes in and out of print lots so if you can't find it when you go looking for it it will be back at some point i'm sure but thank you very much for watching and i will catch you on the next one